In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Saturday, the 19th of October, 2024, 28th week in Ordinary Time, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Anne Samba from Mombasa, Kenya, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Patrick Francis Ejanu, who celebrated his birthday yesterday from Gayaza Wakiso in Uganda, text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Andrew Kim Dung, who celebrated his priestly anniversary on the 15th of this month from Parkinson Diocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. He made Christ the head over all things for the church, which is his body. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Brethren, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe? According to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 2 to 3a, 4 to 5, and 6 to 7. The response is taken from Psalms, chapter 8, verse 6a. And the response is, you have given your son power over the works of your hands. You have, you have given, given your son power over the works of your hands. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name through all the earth. Your majesty is set above the heavens. From the mouth of children and of babes, you fashioned praise. You have, you have given, given your son power over the works of your, your hands. When I see the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon 
and the stars which you arranged? What is man that you should keep him in mind? The son of man that you care for him? You, you have given, given your son power over, over the works, works of your hands. hands. Yet you have made him little lower than the angels. With glory and honor you crowned him. Gave him power over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. You, you have given your son power, power over, over the works of, of your hands. hands. The Gospel Acclamation is taken from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 26b and verse 27a. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Spirit of Truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord. And you also are witnesses. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 12, verses 8 to 12. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how or what you are to answer or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul, in the first reading of today, preaching to the Ephesians, makes a very important prayer for them. Praying that the eyes of their minds may be opened, and I'm stressing about this in the good night message of today. Having the eyes of our minds opened will help us have a sense of direction in our lives. This message is for us today. Our eyes are closed. We have opened more our physical eyes than the eyes of our minds. We are seeing more with the physical eye that always deceives us. The physical eye only sees what is terrible in the world. The physical eye only sees despair. But the divine eye sees hope in the confusion of life. The divine eye is able to see that there is something wrong where people are seeing everything right. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. That is what we are looking for. That is what we want to have. To have eyes of hope. And eyes of hope cannot be our physical eyes. Because we are seeing what is happening. We are seeing in our newspapers the stories of despair. We are seeing scammers all over. And they even make us fear to join groups. Because we are afraid to be scammed. We are afraid to be hacked. These hackers are all over. We are afraid to lose our money in our accounts, so we fear to go on social media because of all this. Our physical eyes are showing us something else, but when we are enlightened in the inner self, when we are enlightened within, we'll be able to know how to make fools of these scammers. No one can just call me and say there is a meeting and I follow. No one can just call me and say there is a problem with your computer. No Microsoft agents use personal numbers. They use office numbers so that they can be located. 
So why listen to somebody who is calling you with a personal mobile number is out to scam you? Avoid those people. And may the eyes of your minds be opened so that you may see all these things. The gospel passage of today moves away from the context of the meal in the house of Simon the leper. And we see Jesus now continuing preaching to the people. He sees a big crowd following him. The number of followers increases. And he warns them of the east of the Pharisees. After warning them, he now tells them, yes, you have followed me. And I know what is going to happen. Many of you are going to leave me. But once you start following me, learn to develop convictions. Many of us lack convictions in our lives as believers. That's why even a small thing can make us stop going to church. That is why even the way we worship our God, we worship him in chapters. When we feel like going to church, we go. When we don't feel like going to church, we don't go. We don't see it as a way of life. Jesus wants the followers to understand it is a way of life. And so he says, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the son of man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. And we have to be ready to show our faith, to show that we believe in Christ and we cannot shy away from that. And acknowledging Jesus is not just in word, it is in deed. We acknowledge him by the way we live our lives in our offices, in our family life, in our businesses. We show people that we are honest. We show people that we are sincere in our dealings with them. That's how we acknowledge Jesus. And he was speaking like this in the midst of his rejection. A lot of people had rejected him and he said, it doesn't matter. You may reject me. You may say all sorts of things about me. But whoever would blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, that person will never be forgiven. Blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is having no faith. When you don't believe there is a God, you are condemned already. And there is no way you can be forgiven if you do not know there is somebody to forgive you. You can't be saying, I don't believe there is Eustace. When you come again and say, Eustace, forgive me. But how can Eustace forgive you who is not there? That is the thing we are talking about here. So a sin against the Holy Spirit is the conscious denial of God's power in your life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Saturday to you. Thanks be to God.